Hi, I'm Lisa Bardot, and today I'll be showing you how to draw this adorable mushroom house in Procreate. Follow along and draw with me in real time, and along the way you'll learn a ton about using layers in Procreate, using alpha lock and clipping masks, choosing colors, how to add texture to your illustrations, and so much more. For this illustration, we'll be using brushes from my free Kids Make Art brush set. This set is the digital version of all your favorite art supplies you used as a kid, including colored pencils, markers, paint, crayons, and more. Before we get started, be sure to download this free brush set at bardobrush.com slash free. And if you're new to using Procreate, be sure to watch my Procreate for Beginners tutorial to learn all the basics. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future tutorials. Let's get started. Let's begin by creating a new canvas. Tap the plus sign in the upper right. The canvas size I'm using today is 3,500 by 3,000 pixels. We'll start by drawing our background. Tap the layers panel and then tap background color. Let's set our background to a nice deep forest green, like that. Then we'll go over to our brushes and you can see that I'm here in the Kids Make Art brush set and it comes with six different brushes and we're gonna get started using the brush called Messy Paint. And then for our color, we're gonna take a finger and hold it down on the screen and you'll see a little circle pop up and that's the eyedropper. We're just gonna select the color that's our background. Then we'll go over to the color picker and we're gonna choose a darker, more saturated version of that color. So we're kind of moving down and to the side a little bit. This way is more saturated, this way is down, so we're moving that way. And then we're gonna go over to this slider over here to adjust the brush size and make it as big as possible. I'm gonna zoom my canvas out just a little bit so that I can get to these edges. And I'm gonna start by just going across and making kind of these bubbly shapes all the way across. And then when I get down with one row, I'm gonna go ahead and do another row here. And then as I go to the next row, maybe I'll kind of vary the heights of these little bubble shapes. And what essentially I'm doing is creating um, like a background texture that's kind of reminiscent of like leaves and foliage and stuff but it doesn't have to be exact. We're not going for <laughs> anything that looks realistic, just kind of like the idea of um, like greenery and stuff back there. And now I don't, I don't need to go all the way down because I'm gonna be putting like a little hill right there, but I am gonna go ahead and choose a little bit darker version of that color, maybe a little cooler. So go down closer to blue. And now I'm gonna draw some like darker, like bush kind of shapes just to give me some more, you know, different kinds of shapes going on here in the background. There we go. Just something kind of like that, that looks like bushes. Maybe we'll get one more layer down here. There we go. Now we're gonna draw our little hill shape that's gonna go in the foreground. So I'm gonna go up to the layers and I'm gonna tap the plus sign to create a new layer. And then I will go over to my colors and I'm gonna choose a green that's a little uh, warmer, so go closer to yellow and lighter. So I'm going with a color that's just about right there. Then I'll go over to my brushes and the brush I'm gonna use now is called Colored Pencil. So go ahead and select Colored Pencil. And the brush size is almost all the way up. And I'm gonna just draw a little curved line here and that's gonna be my hill shape. And I'm using a pretty heavy pressure when I do this. If I did a very light pressure, it'd be like a very like sparse thin line, but I want a really nice dense thick line because I'm gonna be filling it with color drop. And to do that, you drag this circle from the upper corner down into our closed shape there and fill it in. And if you're getting kind of like a, like a black line here along the edge, this pencil is obviously got some texture to it and that's why we're getting that. To kind of help with that, we're gonna adjust the color drop threshold. So if you're getting this line, that's what you can do. Let me undo that. To adjust the color drop threshold, you do a color drop, but you don't lift your pencil up after it fills in. And you'll see this blue bar across the top and you can slide it over and that's going to um, kind of like fill in those holes a little bit more. So you get a little bit cleaner of an edge. This brush is pretty textured, so you still might get a little bit and you can always just color that in, but that's how you can adjust it. All right, so now we're gonna add some texture to our hill. 
So we're gonna go up to our layers panel and we're gonna turn on alpha lock. And what alpha lock does is it locks this shape so we can only draw within this shape and we can't draw anywhere else. So to do that, we're gonna take two fingers and swipe to the right on that layer. You'll see a checkerboard pattern on the little thumbnail here, or you can tap it and you can see the alpha lock is checked right there. So now let's go over to our colors and I am gonna choose a little bit darker version of that same color, again, darker and more saturated, so going this way. And then I'm going to switch back to my messy paint brush. It's the one that we were using before to do the background texture. And for this, I'm gonna draw some lines that kind of curve around like this. So these curved lines that kind of come out from the center. If you imagine this is like the top of a beach ball and you have these lines kind of coming out from the center. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give it some texture, but it's also going to give it some contouring so that this hill looks round. So just go ahead and draw a bunch of lines kind of coming out from the center like that. And if it's getting really dark, this, this brush likes to get darker as you layer on strokes. But if you think that's getting too dark, you can just do a continuous stroke like that and don't lift your pencil off the screen and that will kind of clean it up and lighten it up for you. So do however much texture you want. You can always add some back in just by making some more strokes. There we go, like that. And this is again, just to add some texture, a little bit of contouring as much as you like. I think that's pretty good for me. So now that we've got our background, we've got our hill, we can draw our mushroom. So let's go to the layers panel, tap the plus sign and we'll create a new layer. Let's go to the colors and we're gonna choose white. If you double tap close to white, it will snap to a pure white value. So that's a little trick I like to use a lot. And then I go to my brushes and I'm gonna choose the colored pencil brush. Okay, and so we're gonna draw the base of the mushroom, which is going to be sort of like Kind of like a gumdrop sort of shape. So go ahead and draw that, and then you can fill it with color drop and kind of fill in whatever little spots you can, just color them in. If there's any open spots left. There we go, so it's completely filled it in shape. And then we'll add some texture to that shape just like we did for the grass. So let's go up to the layers panel, turn on alpha lock with two fingers swipe to the right. And you can see that checkerboard pattern on the thumbnail. And then for the color, we're gonna move our hue over into like the yellowish range here. And we're gonna just move this dot, this little circle down into a little bit of gray with a little bit of color in it. So it's about right there. And then we are gonna switch back to our messy paint brush. And we're going to, again, draw some lines, but we're gonna curve them around the shape to add a little bit of contouring. So this part kinda, you know, it's curved at the bottom, so the lines are gonna curve around like that. And this is very subtle, because it's such a light color, but, you know, our mushroom is like a white, grayish mushroom, so. So just like that, not too much. And then we're gonna create the top part of our mushroom. So we're gonna go up to our layers panel and tap the plus sign to create another new layer. I'm gonna switch back to a pure white, and I'm gonna go back to my colored pencil brush. And let me zoom in just a little bit. So I want my mushroom cap to be tilted a little bit, so I'm gonna start here. Um, this is gonna be the top. I'm gonna to make it curve like that. Kinda of make this bell shape. And then come back around, the same thing on the other side. And then I'll fill that in. And see right here, with textured brushes, they don't always fill in that, you know, all, all the way. So you kind of have to either adjust your color drop threshold or you can just, you know, paint in the extra little bits there. So I'm just gonna go around and do that. Okay, and then if I wanna adjust the shape, I think what's happening here is it's getting a little too close to the top of the canvas. So I'm going to use the transform tool to move it. Um, I'm gonna go up to layers. I'm gonna select both mushroom layers and then I'll tap this little arrow and I can move it around. I can make it smaller if I want to make it just a little bit smaller. There we go. So that's a little bit better for me. I'll go back to that mushroom cap and if I just wanna adjust the shape of it a little bit I can. Now that I have a little bit more room up there. All right. 
And then I'm actually going to erase away part of it because this bottom of the mushroom connects to the like stalk of the mushroom. So I'm going to go to my eraser. I'm going to tap and hold it. And that's going to select whatever I had as the brush as my eraser. So you can see here that it's the colored pencil. And then I'm just going to kind of go from this corner to that corner and make it curved like that. So you can imagine this is like where the top of the mushroom connects to the bottom of the mushroom. So it would be like a little bit curved. Just erase all that away. Okay. So let's add some texture to this new shape that we made. Let's go up to our layers and we're gonna turn on alpha lock. Again, swipe to the right with two fingers on that layer. Let's go over to our brushes and we're gonna choose messy paint again. And then for the color, I'm gonna start by sampling this color I already have here on the bottom part of the mushroom. And then I'm gonna go to my colors and just make it a little bit darker because this is like the underside of the mushroom, so it'd be a little bit darker. And then my lines this time are actually gonna curve up. So here in the middle, they'd be kind of like straight up and down, but as you get closer to the edge, they'll curve more. So I'm just gonna make some lines kind of going that way. Again, just to add texture and contouring, the more I layer strokes, it's gonna get a little bit darker. So something like that. I just kind of want it to be a little bit darker than this bottom part. So I might even make the color teeny bit darker. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so there's the bottom of the mushroom. And you notice I didn't go all the way up because we're gonna draw the red part of the top of the mushroom next. So let's go up to our layers and we're going to tap the plus sign to create another new layer. And then we're gonna go over to our color and we're gonna choose just a nice bright red. And then for our brush, we're gonna go back to colored pencil. Now, I wanna draw the kind of bottom edge of the top of the mushroom, and it's gonna go like this. We're gonna kinda of curve around like that. And you'll notice I started over the edge of that shape, um, and we're gonna use a clipping mask to, to fix that, um, but just go with me on this. Um, so we're gonna curve it around, kinda of come down like that, maybe make it curve down and then back around. So I'll do that one more time. So it's gonna kinda of curve around the edge there, go down, curve around on that side, kinda of like that. And then we'll just connect that and make a closed shape by drawing all the way around like that. This line doesn't really matter as long as it's around the edge of the shape we already made. And then I'll fill that in. And I'm gonna adjust my color drop threshold one more time, make it even higher. There we go. I went all the way up and then back, and that's gonna fill it in as much as it possibly can. So now, this looks totally weird. <laughs> we're gonna use a clipping mask to make it the shape we want. So let's go up to the layers, and we're gonna tap on this layer with the red shape, and then we're gonna tap right here where it says clipping mask, and if we do that, you can see that this red shape is clipped to the shape of the layer right below that. That's how clipping masks work. Um, this layer, you can only draw within the confines of the shape of the layer right below it. And you'll see this little arrow that points down to that layer. So that's how that works. It's really handy. So let's add some texture to our red uh, part of it. So again, we're gonna do alpha lock because you can use alpha lock and clipping mask together. So we turned on alpha lock on that. Let's go to our colors and we're gonna choose just like a dark red. And then we're gonna go back to our messy paint brush. And then for this one, first one in the middle would be pretty straight, but as you go to the edge, you're actually gonna go down and around like that. You can imagine the shape, you know, of a mushroom, it kind of goes like that. <laughs> so you're trying to like find that contour within your lines. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just to kind of give the, you know, illusion that there's a little bit of shape to it, but mostly we're doing this to add texture. So go ahead and do that as much as you want. I'll just add some lines like that. Also kind of darkening that to a nice deep red. Super fun. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. 
Just do as much as you want. You can imagine this like this side is curved out that way, like that. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and add some dots, some little polka dots, some white dots to our mushroom cap. So let's go to our colors and we're gonna choose a pure white. Again, double tap close to white and we'll switch back to the colored pencil brush. And we're gonna work on the same layer. We're not gonna create a new layer for this. So now I'm just gonna draw in some dots wherever I think they look good. I'm gonna have some kind of going off the edge. I'll do one big one right here. Do a big one in the center right there. Just kind of wherever you want to put these. So I'm just drawing them and then coloring them in. Maybe we'll have one kind of going off the side there. Uh, how about one right here? Color it in. And because alpha lock is turned on, that's why we can draw along the edge and it doesn't go over the edge. We'll do one right here like that. And I think we need one on this side too. Maybe one little one right there, like a little edge. Okay. All right, so now we've got our mushroom, we've got some dots. Now it's time to start adding in all the details. And we're gonna start with the underside of the mushroom. So let's go back to our layers. We're gonna just go to the layer with the kind of the mushroom cap shape that's white. And I'm gonna start by sampling this color from that area. And then I'm gonna get a darker version of that. So I've gone quite a bit darker. And I'm still using the colored pencil brush to do these details. So now I'm gonna draw some curved lines kind of coming down. So it's gonna look like this. That one will be straight, but the closer you get to the edge, they'll curve up. And then let me do it on the other side here, here. I like that. So these are following the contours of the underside of the mushroom. And then I'm going to reduce the brush size a little bit and draw some thinner lines in between the thicker lines. So you can do like two or three more lines, however much you think looks good, just to give you like a little bit more interest so that we have a little variety of lines in there. So there is our completed mushroom. Now we get to add in all the fun little details and make it look like a house. So I'm gonna just start with a front door. So I'll zoom in there. I'm gonna go up to my layers and I'm gonna create a new layer above everything else. So I'll just tap the top layer and then tap the plus sign. And I've got a new layer above everything else. And for my door, I think I'm gonna make it a nice blue. So that's the blue that I'm using. And I've still got my colored pencil brush selected. And for my door, I'm just gonna make kind of like an arch like that. So it's like an arched door and then I'll fill that in with color drop. And you can make whatever door you want, and I think that you should like get creative and have fun with like what you want the details of your house to be. I wanna add some texture to this door, so I'm going to turn on alpha lock with a two finger swipe. And I'll go back to my messy paintbrush. And I'm not even changing the color right now. If I go over it with a few light strokes, it'll add a little bit of texture and kind of darken it a little bit, so. Just adding a little bit of texture to that. And then I'll go to my layers and I'll create another new layer to add some more details. So next I wanna add like a little window to my door. So I'm going to go to my colors and choose black. And I'm gonna go back to my colored pencil brush. And I'll zoom in here and I'll draw just like a little arched window like that. Fill that in. Like that. And then I'll use my eraser to erase parts of this so you can see the little like window pane lines or whatever they're called. Um, so I'll go to the eraser, which I have set to colored pencil. And I'm just gonna erase a vertical line down and a horizontal line across. And then I have a cute little window like that. Then I'm gonna choose my blue color with my finger like that using the eyedropper. And I'm gonna choose a darker, more saturated version of that color. And I'm just gonna add some details. I'm gonna make the brush size a little smaller. I'm gonna like draw like a line all the way around this. And these are just little details. 
I'm, you know, I can imagine that's like the molding on the door, like the way that it's designed. Do a little square right here. You can do your door again, however you want. Um, let's get like a goldish yellow. And I'll draw a little doorknob there. And maybe like a little step in front of the door, like a little kind of front porch. <laughs> so I'll get like a gray and I'll draw like a little rectangle right there. Color that in. I'll make that a little darker. I'm just gonna go to a little bit darker gray and color drop it. That looks a lot better. So I just made it a little bit darker. Okay, so we got our door done. Uh, why don't we go ahead and add some windows? I'm gonna choose black again. And I'm gonna just draw a little square over on one side, probably do them on both sides actually. So draw a square on that side and another square on this side. Just want some cute little windows. Make sure your shapes are completely closed. Then you can use color drop. Then I'm gonna switch to white and draw the trim around the windows. So to do that, I'm gonna draw a line across the top like that, like a nice thick line, and then a line across the bottom like that. I'm actually making it a little bit bigger than I need it to be, because then I can go to my eraser tool and just erase away, and I get this nice like square shape. It's like a nice, nice right angles <laughs> on those lines. And then I'll connect them on the sides like that. And then draw the lines in the center. I got a cute little window. Let's do this side as well. So same way. So nice thick long lines on the top and bottom. Erase away what I don't need. And then connect those lines. and then divide the whole thing into four like that. Okay, now that I'm seeing, you know, the white against this white, I might darken up the bottom of this mushroom a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to that layer, just select that color and go to my messy paintbrush and just kinda maybe make it a little bit darker. Just darken a little bit. Just add a few more strokes so I can see the windows a little bit more. It looks pretty good. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, another little detail I think would be cute to add is maybe a little like chimney up here. So I'm gonna zoom in there. I'm gonna go back to my layer that has the windows on it. And I am gonna choose black and go back to my colored pencil brush. So I'm just gonna draw like a little kind of curved line. Maybe I'll make my brush size a little smaller. A little curved line there. And then I'm gonna make a line that kind of comes out at an angle and then goes straight up like that. And then I'll add like a little triangle to the top of that and that'll be like the top of my little like stove pipe kind of chimney. Super cute. I think we need some bushes out in front of our house. So let me go ahead and go to maybe like a cool green color, nice and dark. I need it to be darker than this background here of the hill. And I'm actually gonna choose my crayon brush now. And this one has a lot of really nice texture uh, that's gonna look very bush-like. So I'm gonna choose that crayon brush. And then I'm gonna zoom in and just draw some kind of bushy shapes, kind of like little clouds. There you go, something kind of like that. I'll color them all in there. And I'll do one on this side. Just like a little bush right in front. There we go. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna add a little bit of highlights to these bushes. So I'm gonna choose a lighter color and also maybe a little warmer, so closer to yellow. And then I'm just gonna draw a couple little highlights like that. I'm not gonna do a ton with you know lighting in this piece, but 
you know, just this little detail can make the bushes have a lot more dimension, make them look a little less flat. So I'll do that on this side too. I'm gonna do some down here, just a few. There we go. I think that looks really good. This bush looks a little crooked, so I'm gonna just select it and rotate it a little bit. There, awesome. And I mentioned we're not gonna do a ton with lighting, but I do wanna add kind of a drop shadow um, underneath the house. So like a little oval right here. So let me go to my layers and I'm gonna go to the layer with the hill. And I will select this hill color. So I'll just select any color there. And then I'm gonna choose a darker, more saturated version of that color. And for my brushes, I'm gonna use the wet paint brush. This one's a little softer and I think it's gonna be really nice for doing the shadow. So all I'm gonna do, and I have my brush size as big as it can go, is just kind of draw like an oval shape underneath the house like that. And you can see like it's the size that might be cast down from, you know, the shape of the mushroom top, kind of like that. And then I'm gonna get an even darker version of that color and really close to the house, I'll add that darker color. Just makes the whole thing look a little bit more grounded, like it's on the hill and not like it's like floating on top of it or something. So there, I think that looks a lot better. Why don't we go ahead and add a little path going to our house? I'm gonna go to my layers and I'm gonna create a new layer. And then I'm going to go over into the oranges and just choose like a light brown like that. And for my brushes, I'm gonna go back to my colored pencil brush. And for the path, I'm just gonna draw kind of like a little curving path. Down here at the bottom, it's gonna be a little bit wider to give it a little bit of perspective. I'm gonna just color in right there to close the shape so that I can use color drop to fill it. And then I'm gonna use alpha lock to add some texture. So we're gonna swipe to the right with two fingers and switch over to our messy paint brush. And I'm not even gonna change the color. I'm just gonna go kind of back and forth over the whole thing like that. And this brush does get a little bit, adds a little bit of darkness, even if you don't change the color. So I think it's perfect for some really subtle texture. And then here where the shadow is, I kinda wanna darken that up so that it also looks darker like the shadow. So I'm gonna get a little bit darker brown. There we go. So that looks like there's a bit of a shadow on the path too. A little dark right there too. So if you zoom out, you can kind of pretend that there's a shadow there as well. All right, so this is our house. Um, I think it's adorable, but I think we need some stuff around the outside. I, I imagine this house is like a mushroom. It's very small. So maybe we'll add some giant flowers around it. Let's go up to our layers and I'm gonna tap on the top layer, tap the plus sign to create a new layer above everything else. And then for my color, I'm gonna go into like, you know, yellow green, lime green kind of color. I want something pretty light because I want it to be lighter than the hill color. So let me go to my brushes and grab my colored pencil brush. I'm gonna make it as big as possible and just test out that color. I think that looks pretty good. Add a little more saturation to it. There, I really like that color. So let's go ahead and draw some stems. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and let me start by adding maybe like a really big stem right there and maybe a smaller one there. It only goes about that high and then we'll have one maybe kind of coming that way and maybe like a big one going up like that and then maybe another one like that. All right, we've got our stems. Let's add some petals. I'm gonna go to my layers and create another new layer for the petals and I wanna do some daisies. So I'm gonna choose white as my color and you can do any flower you want, but I think it would be fun to add some daisies. So I'm just gonna draw these long petal shapes going all the way around like this. I like to be nice and loose. And then I'll just color them in. You can thicken them up if you need to. But I think they look nice if they're very like loose and expressive. Let's do one right here. As many petals as you want. Just kind of color those in. 
And then for this one down here, I think it would be nice to show the flower from the side. So I am only gonna draw like the bottom half of the flower, kind of like that. And leave the, leave. don't put any petals on the top. Let's do the same thing on this one here. Like that. And then we'll do one more big flower right there. Okay, I'll color that in. And then I think these flowers look, the white just looks a little too stark and flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of texture. So again, we're gonna go to our layers. We're gonna turn on alpha lock, the two finger swipe. And I'm just gonna choose like a creamy gray, kind of like that. And I'm gonna go get my messy paint brush. Got my brush size down just a little bit. And I'm just gonna add in a few strokes coming out from the center. It's really subtle, but it makes the white look just a little less flat. It gives a little bit of something interesting. Some painterly texture. Do this one again, just a few strokes coming out from the center. Very loose, messy, that's totally fine. That's what's great about Alpha Lock is you can just do whoosh, whoosh, and it will stay within the lines you already made. It's great. I think that looks a lot better. Now I'm gonna add um, just some line details going down the middle of each petal. So I'm gonna choose an even darker version of that color and go back to my colored pencil. Make it nice and small, I'm about 30%. And then I'm just gonna draw two lines coming from the center of, the, of each of the petals. We're gonna be adding um, like a yellow center, but we'll just do this now. And I'm using very light pressure to do these lines. If I do very heavy pressure, it would look like that. But if I do light pressure, you get these nice delicate lines with lots of texture in them. So just two quick strokes. Do this one as well. And we'll go over here, just two little strokes down each of the petals. Doesn't really matter what it looks like in the center because we're gonna be covering that up with the yellow part. We'll do this last flower. Sometimes it's nice to be very loose, not worry about it like being really slow and perfect. Sometimes it's nice to go whoosh, 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 make a couple lines, make it messy. Makes it, it makes it look a lot more expressive. All right, let's do the center of our flowers. I'm gonna go to my layers, tap the plus sign to create another new layer. And then for my color, I'm gonna go and choose like a warm, nice warm yellow, like that. Increase my brush size just a little bit and then go through and just draw a circle in each flower, like that. And for these flowers that are like the side view, what you do is you draw the bottom curve of that center piece of the flower and then you draw kind of like a button shape like that sticking up, like a button that you would press and fill it in. So that's what that shape looks like. I'll do it one more time over here. So we'll do the curved edge like that, draw sort of a little button shape, fill that in like that. And we'll do one more right there, nice big circle. Okay, and then of course we need to add a little bit of texture to that. So again, alpha lock on that layer. And I'm gonna choose a color that's a little more closer to orange and a teensy bit darker, not much. And for my brush, I'm actually gonna use the crayon brush because it's got this nice bumpy texture that reminds me a lot of what a flower looks like in the center. You get these nice like bumps. So I'll just quickly go over that. Just do a quick light pass on it. I'm not using a lot of pressure. If I use a lot of pressure, it'll be really dense. So I'm just gonna do some a little bit, just a little bit of texture. There we go. And the last one over here. Okay, that looks awesome. The last thing I'm gonna do for this illustration is just add a little bit of grass-like texture all over the hill. So we'll just use this same layer. I'm gonna turn off alpha lock 
Swipe to the right with two fingers on that same layer. Now there's no checkerboard pattern, so we know alpha lock is off. And then for the brush, I am gonna go back to my colored pencil. I'm gonna go a little smaller with my brush size. I will sample the hill color and then choose a darker version of that color for my little grass texture. So I'm gonna start by the, the foot of each flower stem and just kind of draw some grass kind of around that to make it look like it's coming out of grass. So it's not just like floating there on the hill. Uh, i got this one over here. And then for the all over grass texture, I'm just gonna go around and just do like three little, you know, strokes like that, kind of all coming out from each other. And this is kind of what I like to do to do like a stylized grass texture. And I don't wanna texture the whole thing and have the whole thing with little tiny blades of grass. This gives, the, gives you the idea that this is grass. It's like a stylized version. So you just go around and kind of evenly but randomly add these little marks. And um, to give it a little bit of perspective, as you get closer to the back of the hill, like here behind the house, you can get smaller with your brush strokes because things that are farther away are smaller. So the grass would appear to be smaller back there. That'll give you the illusion of some perspective. So the ones here in front are really big and the ones in the back are pretty small. So just going around and adding some here and there wherever you think needs a little bit of texture. You can do some on the edge, kind of stick up over the edge of the hill. That looks pretty cool. And here in front of the house, you can even do some along the path. Just add a little bit of grass there. We'll do some on this side. I'll do some tall pieces closer to the viewer here. And then we can do some smaller ones, you know, as you go back. Just kind of going around not being very precise here. I mean, you can be if you want, but I don't think it's necessary. You get more uh, kind of a tapered shape in your brush stroke when you do like this flicking motion. Do some big ones here. And make them smaller as we go back. So I'm just kind of going all over. And we get really small as we get to the back of the hill. And again, I'm putting some over the edge of the hill. Really little ones back here. Maybe one right there. It's always helpful to zoom out, see if you missed any spots that you want a, a little bit of grass texture. But I think this looks great. I'm really happy with this adorable scene. And of course, you can keep going with it. You can put your own spin on it. I would love to see you do that. You know, you can do whatever types of um, house details you want, make, make different doors and windows and other details, maybe add a character to it or something, different stuff on the roof, different flowers. Just take this idea and go wild with it and have fun and make it your own and use your imagination. And I cannot wait to see what you create with this. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun making this adorable illustration and you learned a little bit about Procreate along the way. Again, I'm Lisa Bardot and I help people find their creativity through drawing on the iPad. If you'd like to support me, I hope you'll check out my premium Procreate brushes that inspire creativity at bardobrush.com. If you're sharing your artwork to Instagram, I would love to see it. Use the hashtag bardobrush. Thanks and happy art making. If you like this video, please subscribe for more awesome tutorials and check out one of my other videos. Thanks and have a great day.